So, what do you see? I don't see it either. And that's the point. There's absolutely nothing out there except for the main river. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of The New Fly Fisher. My name is Mark Melnick. We are in the heart of Newfoundland and Labrador at Arlook Outfitters. We're on the make for Atlantic salmon, the Atlantic salmon of the main river. It's July, the fishing is on fire, and we are about to light it up. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. That's a nice size fish. What? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. There's no arguing. There's something magical about the rock. Something that keeps anglers from all over the world needing to return. The magic, I believe, is found in everything Newfoundland and Labrador, be it the wildlife, the landscapes, the weather, the food, the people, and of course, the fishing. Newfoundland and Labrador, with its fantastic maritime ways and endearing accents, grabs those from away and leaves a mark on everyone who travels here. A mark you can't and won't soon forget. We are fortunate enough to be back on the rock at a place that is equally special Arlock Outfitters at Caribou Lake, a heli access outpost camp fit for all. Caribou Lake offers access to the excellent main river, which boasts wonderful returns of Atlantic salmon. The lodge at Caribou Lake holds only four anglers, so it's perfect for small groups of friends or couples. Fully guided with your own on site cook, all you have to worry about is the fun and the fishing. On this adventure, we're guided by an old friend, Mitch Head, and new, John White. We're also joined by friend of the lodge, Justin Whiteway, for a few days. After we get settled, we decide to head out and begin. We motor across the lake to the outflow of Caribou Lake. The water is high from recent rains and the outflow is hauling. And it isn't long before both Justin and I hook into salmon. There are a number of options fishing out of Caribou Lake with the outflow being a very productive area. Fish battling up the river from the main into Caribou Lake will rest at the mouth of the outflow. Starting high in the run and fishing right through the V to the start of the drop is key. There are fish here, and being so close to the lodge, it's a perfect place to get started. We landed a couple of fish and then decide to call it a night. Tomorrow, we make the trek across the bog to the main river. With the river on the drop, it should be exceptional. Well, we didn't see this coming. Just what we need, more water. But as we always say, you have to fish it as you find it. So, we head across the lake to begin our first full day on the main. So we've got black flies, we've got mosquitoes, and heaps of rain. We must be salmon fishing. That's right, Mark. <laughs> this is Mitch Head. Mitch is one of the guides here at Arlock Outfitters at Caribou Lake. Mitch, uh, we have had a lot of water. Um, do we have a shot at catching salmon this week? I always do. Um, we're gonna go head up river and fish some spots that we've never fished before. Let's take advantage of this high water, use the boat so we don't have to walk as much. So. Awesome, awesome. So brand new water, lots of salmon in the river. 
Let's launch it. Let's go. Let's go. Mitch, how do you want me to fish this today? Start with a short line and just slowly work your way out. See if we can find a fish. Rain can be a good thing when fishing is slow. It causes fish to move. The increased water flows, increased oxygen, and usually the temperature drop associated with most rain events will generally get fish on the move. However, sometimes, if the water's too high, the fish will blow or move right through and not stop at the pools they would in lower water events. This seems to be what's happening this morning. We fished multiple runs and switched flies multiple times, but didn't come tight until the afternoon, once the river started to drop. So Mitch, when a fish eats a hitched fly, I've got the timing down okay that you wait half a second once you see the fish take the fly and then you lift up gently. How do you set the hook when you're swinging a wet fly that's subsurface and the fish comes and grabs it and you may not see the take? I, right away, as soon as I feel it, I set the hook. As if you wait, sometimes it's too late. That fish came right out of the water for this fly. I just missed one, and I thought our day was over. But, 11th hour heroics come true sometimes. It'll be a nice little gross, but you know what? On tough days, you take them all day long. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh, nice. Very nice. That's what I love about salmon fishing, is that you can have a day of absolute dust, and then just when you're ready to give up and pack it in and go back to the barn, it turns into nothing but diamonds. And that's where we're at. That's salmon fishing. It's so fun. It tests your mental ability, your stamina, and your desire to catch fish, really. Nice little grills, fantastic Atlantic. When it's tough outside, you just gotta keep persevering and you'll be rewarded. Things look like they're turning around as Justin and John each release a salmon around the same time. Tomorrow is another day. Oh. Hey Mitch, thanks for a good day. You know, we worked hard for the shots that we got. We made good on one. It's a big difference between one and zero. Yeah. It was fun though. Thanks, man. Very well. The next morning, things are looking a little brighter with dry skies and falling river water. Justin is fishing with Mitch today. I get to fish with John White. John is a seasoned salmon guide that makes the Humber River his home river. He's well experienced in big salmon hunting. Now, if these are moving fish, will the take be more aggressive? Uh, you get a lot of light takes. Okay. And, or super aggressive. They'll be extreme either way. Okay. You're not going to get a slow take. It'll just be a pop at it, and either he sinks it or he doesn't. Well, when the water here gets high, 
these fish are all going to move in tight to this bank. They won't like the heavy flow out in the center, so they're going to come in and hook these back eddies and run those current lines. So we'll fish them in close to the bank, little boulder obstructions. A lot of times you can recognize these spots because it's the spots when you normally fish the river that you'd be in sitting, taking your shore lunch. All these areas you can get comfortable, they'll get comfortable in the same zone. And unlike yesterday, where we were fishing primary wet flies, today we're fishing bombers. So John, how do you want to fish this pool? Well, we're going to start and fish this inside seam right down to that rock. And when, where you see the water shouldering off that rock, that's where I suspect you're going to be running into fish. There's a rock ledge that comes up from that one, actual little cliff ledge that comes up the river about 10 feet. With a dry fly, you're going to fish it in lanes that are going straight down the river. So you're going to drop it up high and allow that fly to float straight down. With a wet fly, typically you'll fish it in a lane that's actually coming across the river. So you'll segment your river in lines coming through your pool. When you're dry, you got to turn around, drop it in, mend in instantly to get a nice dead float. And then you're gonna pick your lines according to where you wanna go, going straight down the river. A lot of people try to fish the dry coming across the river and it just doesn't work. Got him. Got him. Fish on. So, I raised this fish twice on a bomber and John suggested that we switch over to a wet fly because the fish wasn't committing. It was simply coming up and looking at, this, uh, at these bombers and was not willing to eat it. So sure enough, I tied on an undertaker. We're hooked up. Now, I don't think I'm gonna move from this perch if you don't mind You're gonna that. stay right there. <laughs> <laughs> I got deep water all around me. Nice fish. Now, of course, these hooks are barbless, so it's important to keep constant tension on these fish no matter what they do, um, because if you give them any slack, they're gonna spit the hook. It's amazing that you, can, that you can move a fish a couple times, and they do that, just proves that they're, that they're happy at the top of this rapid canyon. They're happy just to sit and recover, right? They're not gonna be moving around too much. So if you can locate a fish, stick with it, because you can, you know, Find the right fly, you're gonna catch it. Nice. There we go. Pretty work. Good fish. That's a real nice fish. I'll come to you. You, yep, yeah, you come to me. I'll get your leader. We can get a good look at him. Look at that. What a beauty. So it does pay. You raise a fish, you work a fish, change your flies up a couple times, and you come tight, hopefully. <laughs> But the thing is, man, is that that's all your guidance, right? Like I would have thrown that bomber all day. They are lively, aren't they? Oh, they are. <laughs> now, I raised that fish twice on a bomber and then once on the Undertaker. John, um, on the Undertaker eat, I didn't prick it, but you had some sage advice to allow me to actually catch that fish. What is it? Well, I asked you to shorten up, bring that fly in closer to you, further mm -hmm. from the fish. So when the swing comes through, He's obviously interested in your fly. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna make him move for it. Make him work for it. When he comes to work for it, then you get a better hook set. Yeah, perfect, and that's exactly what happened. He actually came for the fly, ate it, turned, and then I was able to, to lift, and it was all over but the release, right? Yeah. Thanks, man. That was fun. So John, that first fish that I rose on the Undertaker may not have actually been the fish that I caught. No. So a lot of times these salmon, they'll turn around and stack up. And when we say stack up, the first salmon will sit, take a spot in front or behind a rock, but the current lines, he'll change them just by being there. So more salmon will stack up on each side of them. So they'll stack up like dominoes. So a lot of times when you find uh, taking salmon in a the pool, there's a couple more right next to them. The hunt. Good job. On a bomber. Can't beat fishing a dry fly. You 
<laughs> you really can't. Oh my gosh, this guy's making me work for it. <laughs> An aggressive take too, hey? Oh yeah. I want to get this guy on the reel so I can let the drag do its work. There we go. Oh, he came ah. So the reason why I lost that fish is actually very simple. Um, it's because I didn't trust myself as an angler to not have the fish on the reel. I was so focused in trying to get the line brought up onto the reel that I lost tension with that fish and I didn't keep up with it. And of course, as you know, as soon as you give any slack on a barbless hook, you've got a great chance of losing that fish. And that's just what happened. So in that situation where a salmon eats, or any fish really, eats and runs towards the boat, just focus on your line hand. Don't worry about the reel until you get the fish under control and it starts going the opposite direction. Then you can bring up line. I made a rookie mistake and uh, I lost a salmon for it. There's a fish. Oh, so aggressive, so aggressive. They're just angry after this bomber. Now, here I am in the same situation. The fish is running to the boat and I don't, I can't not keep up with them. So I'm gonna get him as close as I can. He's gonna see the boat and then he's gonna take off. And I gotta keep all this under control while keeping the fish tight. Oh, he jumps in the boat. Okay, now I've got him tight. And under control, I can get my slack in. Keep this fish tight. Again, came loose. That's the fun of barbless hooks, right? It's all about the eat. Ooh, that was fun. That was a good one. That was a good eat. That was fantastic. There's a salmon. Oh, what a gentle sip. Did you see that? Hardly anything at all. Just nose up. Oh, nice. Nose up. And just suck it in and it was game on. Those explosive shots of power from these fresh fish are what you really have to absorb with this rod. And watch what direction they're going, lead them that way and then come back the opposite to get them under control. Oh, see, like, and then there you go. Use your, use your line hand to free outline when you're not on the reel. And let these fish tire themselves out. It is cold water. There's been a rain event, as I've said. And they're fresh from the ocean, so they're hot. They are hot. Super hot. Nice. Now, one of the important things to remember when you've got a net person or a guide that's manning the net is that it's your responsibility as an angler to bring the fish to the guide. Um, and you've got to lead them that way. It's just they're still so strong. And you've got to lead them. Once, once you can get the fish's head, right, you can basically water ski them right into the net. There we go. Nothing like it. I did that big upstream, upstream mend and that put a little bit of movement on that bug and the salmon came up and just crushed it. What an aggressive eat, eh, John? Oh, what a beautiful take. There That's what go. it's all about, man. You know, I'll, whether it's smallmouth bass, northern pike, Atlantic salmon, brook trout, anything, that elite on top, I will fish all day with a dry for one eat. Just because it's, for me, it's the 
utmost in adrenaline inducing angling. And then the jumps are just candy on the cake. What absolute fun. So that fish ate, as soon as I mended up, I put a little movement on that, on that dry and I'm gonna get right below ya. Let him settle. And there we go. Perfect. Oh, Flies out. There. Look at the colors. Oh, just perfect, hey? Right out of the ocean. Gonna be a bullet. <laughs> I was just slowly floating away there. Hey man, you called it. The, well, the water's been dropping all week. Today could be the ultimate Atlantic Salmon Day. Oh yeah. I'm excited. Oh, right in that same lie as the other one too. And that was a less aggressive eat, wasn't it, John? Oh, that was just a sip. So now that he's fighting against the current and my got a got a great bend in my rod, I can get him on the reel and let the reel. That's not a bad fish, and let the reel do the work as he swims right towards me. You know, as soon as he sees an net, he's gonna go oh, crazy. Oh, he's coming back to life. <laughs> Nice fish. Look how fat that one is, hey? Oh yeah. A little bigger than the last one. Still a nice gross. We have fished this part of the main river for years and seen the odd moose. Well, this afternoon, the flies made an appearance and we got to experience something fantastic. Four moose make their way to the river to escape the biting flies. Two young bulls and a cow and her calf. You can't tell me that that isn't just incredible. What a day. Today, I'm back to the main with Mitch. We're joined by Arlick Lodge manager, Brad LeDrew and his son, Connor. Connor is exactly what we love to see on the river. Young, keen, and totally addicted to fishing for salmon. Dad strikes silver first as Brad ropes a good one at Paradise Pool on a bomber. And now it's the kid's turn. Connor whiffs on a fish, but gets right back at it and sticks a great one. There really is nothing quite like these moments on any river. The main river is perfect for all levels of angling ability. From experts to first timers, the number of fish in the main puts the odds in the angler's hands. From many grills to the chance at a giant, it's great to see the next generation keen and loving salmon fishing. We decide to stay at Paradise after a great lunch and light it up. The weather has turned, and so have the fish. What a rodeo, this is crazy. We're back down at Paradise and it's just after lunch. Um, and we're swinging wet, wet flies through here. It's a cloudy day. Uh, rain's starting to move in, so we figured we'd go a little wet. And, uh, oh, nice. I saw a fish surface right in front of this push on this rock here. I put a bomb cast down, and uh, a different fish came up and ate it. So we still know where there is one, but we'll deal with this one right now. Not only is the water high and dropping, we are also here at a high tide event, which affects the fishing as well. Generally, the high tides mean super high water in the ocean, so 
and the odd tide you usually get a big run of fish coming in. On the white paddy. So the powers of observation are key when you're on a salmon river. I saw a small little fin come up on that rock, made a presentation. This is the second cast to that spot, and this is the second fish. So all those, nice, all those um, little clues that you're given, pay attention to them and adapt, throw to them, you never know. And we still haven't got to the fish that I saw first. Not a jumper though, is he? No, he hasn't come up yet. <laughs> you were saying? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, salmon fishing's fantastic. Such a there you go. There he goes. <laughs> Such a great sport. All right, let's take a look at the fly that caught those salmon. Um, basically, this is called a white patty, and what it is, is it looks like a, a bomber, a thin, thin, thin bomber, but it's got a white tail and a white cape, um, sort of a slender single cape there, uh, and it's a wet fly. It rides just below the surface, and these fish go absolutely crazy for it. I don't know if it's the contrast between the beige and the white that drives them nuts, or it's just that flash through, but on a medium speed swing, um, you know, these fish are absolutely going crazy for this fly. We went back up to Bumblebee in the late innings of the game and were able to move one last fish for the day. So we are heading back up to Crosby's run and we decided we'd stop here at Bumblebee. <laughs> it's a perfect bomber day. It's uh, it's no, very, very little wind <laughs> and it's just slick calm on, on this water and overcast and uh, decided to throw some bombers at, at these fish and it's working out. Nice. Bomber fish, can't beat it all day long. Just super, super fun. What a day here on the main river. With one day left, will we see a salmon? It's our final day here at Caribou Lake Lodge, and the water for the most part has continued to drop. John and I head upstream for one last day together. Oh, a little adventure is all I really need. Oh, no, that's the best way. Huh? I really need. Got him. Got him. I really need. We moved this fish with one pass on a downward trajectory cast and the second pass through I was too far up in the water column and I wasn't quite to him get away from that rock so I gave myself another six inches and cast back up tight to the rock and this fish went right in his wheelhouse and he came and ate it fishy fishy <laughs> That's the issue, right, with fishing in the water, is you're in their home now. So the fly I've got on here is called a silver tip, and it's a black bear hair fly with a silver butt on it with a little bit of um, tinsel wrap. And uh, it's, a great, it's a great fly. It's a very low profile fly. And um, what is it, a size 10? Size 10. It yeah. is a 10? So it's a small fly too. 
Small flies on the main are generally the ticket. Mind you, you can get away with, we've been throwing some six bombers too, right? Oh yeah. Ooh, my arm's getting tired. It's a good fish. Not a bad way to start the day, John. No, the best way. It is the best way. Pretty there work, my friend, pretty work. So if I can just give you that. Yeah. And I'll show you. Fantastic fish. There it goes. That's fun. Oh, beautiful way to start the day. Five minutes in, we just started. It's gonna be a fantastic day today. With the release of that great fish, John has some intel on salmon behavior as the day winds to an end. When fish turn around to take aggressively in the morning, it seems like all the fish in the pool are gonna be aggressive. When fish go dormant and sit on the bottom, there could be a hundred fish in that pool and you can pass a fly over them for hours and not see any motion, nothing. But the minute they turn on, it's not one fish turns on. It tends to be the biggest percentage of those fish will all turn on the same time. This section of the river is called Two Tree, and Two Tree is known to be a big holding spot for fish. Well, let's take a look at where these fish just might be holding. In this scenario, there are multiple spots where salmon will lie. The trick is to pick this complex section of river apart. The seams coming off all exposed and submerged boulders are places where fish can be holding, expending minimal energy. Wherever you see a consistent bubble line is also a good holding spot. This is where, if fish were actively feeding, the grocery aisle would be. It's also a current break, definitely a benefit. The push, or the hydro cushion directly in front of the rock is an often overlooked location for holding salmon. And of course, the tail out of a pool or run where the water slows and the fish have to expend less energy to maintain position. So there you have it. Identify these key locations in a river and you'll up your chances at catching Atlantic salmon. Got him. Oh, I lost him. <sighs> Talk about bark fever. <laughs> My knees are knocking. Got them. They must just be stacked on that one side. That's uh, one landed and two hooked. Let's see if I, ooh, good fish. Right along that bubble line, eh, John? Oh yeah, right on the line. That fish. But an eight foot rod, nine feet long. Eight, eight weight, weight forward floating line, nine foot leader, that's all you need. Pure fight. Now you'll also notice that when I fight fish, I never grab the fly rod up here, ever. Um, and there's a very good reason for that. Fly rods are designed to be fought out of the butt. So if you put your hands here, for example, on a fly rod, you change the flex of the rod and you're more apt to break a rod when you have a big fish on. I'd rather switch hands if you're tired and fight with your other hand than touch a rod or hold a rod up, up the ferrule. There we go. Right in, nice fish. Nice to see you again, John. Nice to see you again. All right, I'll let you handle this one. We switch back to a bomber in hopes of seeing a main river salmon. We did it. We got a great jack salmon on a bomber, no less.
This is the part of the story that I hate to tell. This is the end. This is all the time we have left for this episode of The New Fly Fish. I want to thank you for watching, coming to you from the heart of Newfoundland and Labrador at Arlock Outfitters. I want to thank everybody at Arlock for making this adventure so unbelievably amazing. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it, and what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. For more in our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name is Mark Melnick, and hopefully one day we'll see you here in the wilds of Newfoundland and Labrador. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,